welcome back to electrical power plus in another interesting video the topic of the today's video is circuit breaker close block it means the closing interlock of the circuit breaker actually when any one of the method is going to close the circuit breaker there are some checks that are necessary to be take care of before closing the circuit breakers in the screen you can see a series of these interlocks we have this circuit breaker closing coil its nomination is y3 and it has two terminals c1 and c2 the c2 is giving negative permanently now whenever c1 get positive the closing coil will be energized and it try to close the circuit breaker but before positive reach at c1 terminals the positive from this left end have to pass many many interlocks these interlocks are necessary for smooth and protected operation of the circuit breaker if any one of this interlock is open the circuit breaker will not uh, the closing coil will not energized uh, and the circuit breaker will not close and the protection and maintenance or the control team has to take care of this problem so now we will see one by one all these close blocks we have four ways to close the circuit breaker one from the local TNC switch at the switch gear and other through the auto recloser and third one is from control panel and fourth one is from the SCADA whenever any one of these four options get close our positive will extend from the initial stage up to this point now the first close block or closing interlock is LOR LOR mean lockout relays. Lockout relays are usually 86 relays. These 86 relays only operate in case of any permanent fault or any uh, severe fault. Okay, so whenever any one of the lockout relay related to this circuit breaker is operated, its NC contact will get open and the positive will not uh, reach out from here so it will block the closing the lockout relays could be any for example its main lockout relay or bus bar lockout relay or circuit breaker failure lockout relay here i have shown three but in the specific scheme it could be one or it could be two it only depend upon the scheme okay now, for example, the lockout relays are not operated. It's in healthy state. So our positive will extend from here to up to this point. Now, here is a check for SF6. SF6 gas. Actually, if when it is low, it means it's this NC contact will get open. Okay. Why SF6 is... Uh, not uh, YSF6 is uh, ref uh, refraining from closing the circuit breaker actually when the SF6 is low it is unable to quench the arc so whenever the tripping come or whenever the closing appear due to arc if it not quench the arc it will damage the circuit breaker that's why there is a SF6 interlock whenever it is low it will be open so whenever it is open the positive will not get out whenever it is it is good condition it will be nc and the positive will extend from here up to this point now there is anti-pumping relay anti-pumping relay is actually for the safety of the closing coil if anti-pumping relay is operated uh, for example to save the closing coil of the circuit breaker it will not extend uh, this positive from here so it's uh, normally it is the nc so whenever it's operated it will be it will open 
okay now we think our sm6 is okay our anti-pumping relay is not operated so it will appear as here now we have a q1 and q2 interlocks these are actually the isolators now i am talking all these interlocks in the service position of the of the circuit breaker it means we uh, we are going to close the circuit breaker at the real situation q1 and q2 are the isolator okay so our both isolators before and after the circuit breaker should be closed whenever these closed only then we are able to close the circuit breaker if any one of the isolator is open it will not close the circuit breaker this is a q1 and this is a q2 so it should be closed this also should be closed because they are in the series if any one of the breaker is uh, isolator is open it will not uh, it will not uh, it will its nc or its no contact will get open its no contact will open and it will not extend the positive so the contact is no for the isolators for both isolators and no contact and no contact so whenever the isolator is closed only in this case it will be closed okay now the positive will extend if any of the isolator is open it means isolator is open so the equipment or, or line or whatever it is it is not uh, ready for energization so if it is not ready for energization the breaker should not close okay the isolator should be closed so that we can close the breaker so in this case our positive will extend from here to, to this point now the next check is the TCS mean trip coil supervision we have two trip coils uh, so uh, two trip coils trip coil 1 and trip coil 2 if any one of the trip coil is healthy so it will pass this positive if both are unhealthy both are faulty so it will open these points when the both are open the positive will not extend from this point if any one of the uh, coil is healthy for example trip coil 2 is healthy it will extend the positive from here up to here or if tcs1 is healthy it will extend if both healthy surely the positive will come from here to this part now there is a earth switch usually there is a earth switch at the circuit breaker if there is a earth switch at the circuit breaker before closing the circuit breaker it should be open should be open not close whenever that switch is open the its nc contact will be closed so now our positive will extend from here to here if this earth switch is closed close mean it will be open whenever that switch is closed so cbs surely not it should not close otherwise there will be a dead fault so that we have to make sure that it's open whenever it's open only in this case its nc contact will be closed and positive will extend from here to here now there is a spring charge uh, in some schemes the spring charge interlock is applied in some cases it's, it's not applied the reason is when the spring is uncharged uh, surely the breaker will not close so the spring charging and discharging is actually itself a uh, interlock so whenever spring is uh, for example spring is charged it will close and it will extend positive up to here if spring is for example not charged what will happen if spring is not charged it will be open so positive will not extend okay but we can ignore this uh, spring charge interlock because for example there is no interlock and there is a complete jumper now spring is not charged okay spring is not charged what will happen the positive will extend from here to here but spring is not charged the coil will try to close but due to spring on charge the circuit breaker will not get closed okay that's why in some cases this interlock is applied and some schemes it's not applied so it can be skipped but all other interlocks are very very important so i hope uh, you enjoyed this video and you got the concept if you like the video 
please subscribe my channel so that you can uh, see my next video that time thank you